Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. How do you like the new set? You would not believe how hard Cristal has worked with me on this, and most of the actual nuts and bolts work has been her. So, way to freaking go. Um, I'm going with my graphics this way, because when I added them at, in post-production, it made my rendering time, even with this computer, like 12 hours. If any of you know what kind of processor I need to really spit out uh, 20 minutes to a half hour of uh, MTS files, I'd love to know. Uh, but it was becoming impossible. So I'm going to be triggering my graphics live from a computer that you can almost see on camera here. And hopefully that will solve all the problems. All right, guys. Um, oh, and if for any reason I need comments, need comments, if you can't see the graphics well on this, I need you to let me know. Because in the future, then, we will have Cristal actually zoom in to each of my graphics if for any reason it looks like maybe you guys aren't able to see it. So I'm going to need your feedback. But for all intents and purposes, this is the new set. I was not able to find another way to get around the graphics issue. And I'm trying to get these articles out in a timely fashion because news is timely. And uh, there's no sense in me doing this at 5 o'clock in the morning if, uh, if they're not going to be posted for a day. It, it's ridiculous. All right, guys, I'm going to do an article, a series of articles here about why I believe Christianity is absolutely under attack. And uh, I'm also going to talk about why that matters, including, if you are not a Christian, uh, two things that I wish to say before I begin. First of all, I will disclose that I am, in fact, a Christian. I do believe in Christianity. Second of all, I am not a spokesman for Christianity. I'm in a band. I'm a DJ. Um, I do a lot of the things that you think somebody in a band and who's a DJ would do. Um, and I, again, my personal life is personal, and I'm not going to get into it. If I ever run for anything and people are like, didn't you used to work here? You know what? Personal life is personal, and I'm a firm believer in that. However, for those of you that are, who's he to be a spokesperson for Christianity? I am not a spokesperson for Christianity. I do not have that kind of willpower, and I am somebody who openly admits it. I would be a black eye for Christianity if I was their spokesman. Having said that, um, this matters, people, and I'm going to let you know why. Even if you're not a Christian, first of all, they come after people that a lot of people don't like. So that there's a prejudice against, uh, against, say, black people. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to promote the worst stereotypes of black people and make that what people think that uh, being black is. And as someone who has a number of African-American friends, that is absolutely not the case. Um, if you demonize uh, Hitler, demonized the, demonized the Jews and the communists, guess what? They came after Jews and communists and nobody stood up for them of course, then they started going after blacks. They started going after anybody in any political party that didn't believe in him, regardless of their skin tone. Um, over and over and over and over again. Um, there's a famous quote from the Reverend. His name just went, whoop. Uh, they, they come for one group, then another, then another. Let's say you're not a Christian, and they decide to do horrible things to Christians. Let's say you're not a Muslim. They decide to do horrible things against Muslims. And you're not a Hindu either, but they come and they take the Hindus and they slaughter them. Well, it didn't really matter to you. You know, you're Jehovah's Witness. Of course, now they're coming for you, and there is nobody to stand up for you. That is why the stories that I am going to get to matter. That's why. And I've already disclosed that I am personally a Christian. That has no bearing on this story whatsoever. And uh, there are a lot of people that would agree. Um, this is from CBS DC. Um, CBS, you have way too many pops ups. Your site is annoying. However, I do want to thank uh, WKYC for uh, promoting the up and upcoming Passing Time show at Buzzbin Music Shop. Um, it is a Hall of Fame weekend. Please make sure you're there, August 3rd. Uh, CBS has been, uh, believe it or not, really helping us with that. Um, Paul. 
Majority of Americans believe God played a role in human evolution. Um, also, before I get into this, my personal beliefs from what I've studied, what science shows beyond a shadow of a doubt, microevolution happens. People will say that the, uh, there is the peppered moth. When, uh, when there was less pollution in the atmosphere, uh, the moth had a, uh, a white to a very, very light gray, off blue tints in it. And when the, uh, the air and the everything got to be more poisonous, then they became more dark, more peppered looking, hence the name of the peppered moth. People will say that that is evolution. That is microevolution. I do not believe, and science does not support macroevolution. That is the belief that fish became walking land creatures and changed species. There is nothing in the scientific record anywhere where anything has jumped species. The Neanderthal was not an ape that became a human. All tests have proved that Neanderthal was a human. We evolved as microevolution, not macroevolution. And uh, before I get a lot of people, a lot of strange hate mail or anything over here, I am also not a flat earth person. I do not believe you know, the earth is flat or anything ridiculous as that. So we're going to go ahead here and get into it. A new poll finds that a majority of Americans believe that God played a part in the evolution of humans. The YouGov survey shows that 62% of Americans believe God helped create humans. 37% of those believe God created human beings in their present form within the last 10,000 years, while 25% believe human beings evolved from lesser life forms over millions of years, but God guided the process. And uh, again, I've already told you what I believe on that. The reason I'm pointing this out is because this is a majority opinion. But there are a very large number of people that do not like Christianity. So if they can demonize Christians and get the largest group of people out of the way first, then the other scum will be easy to clean up. See how they work? Uh, YouGov found that more people favored having creationism taught in schools than those that opposed. Forty percent of those believe that an intelligent design, the belief that God created the universe, should be taught in public schools, while 32 percent opposed the teachings. In other words, they're afraid to even look at the fact that it, all signs tend to not only point to creationism, but uh, look up, and you're going to think I'm nuts, so I'm not even going to get into it. I've done it in other shows. Look up the universe is a hologram. And that is not something that I wrote. It is not something that I came up with. I am not affiliated with at all. It is science. It is not something I made up. Look that up before you call me crazy. So what we're looking at, we, we've established one thing thus far then. A majority of Americans believe in at least God having some role in what it is that we have as the human experience us as people. That's not what you find in the media though. What you find are people praising things like this and it makes you wonder why certain things in this article were not disclosed and I'm going to let you know exactly what those were. Um, Fox News, liberal media love a new Jesus book, it's called Zealot, and fail to mention that the author is a Muslim. Basically, a Muslim has attacked the tenets of the historic Christian faith, and people all over are now giving rave reviews to this book for being insightful. All it's doing is writing down what Muslims have always believed. Now, do I believe in what is in the uh, Quran? No, I do not. I think that historically, Archaeology has proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are wrong. Um, if anybody wants to see my work where I use science, not the Bible, to prove that Christ rose from the dead, I will be happy to send you that. It was a thesis that I did in school. Um, but beyond that, uh, whether or not you want to read that or not, 
the Quran doesn't really have a historically accurate image of the Christian faith. And again, it doesn't matter if you believe that or not, because they'll be going after the Muslims after they're done getting rid of all those crazy Christians. This Again, this show is about unity. This show is not to make you a Christian. I'm trying to show you something. Riza Aslan, author of the new book Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth, has been interviewed on a host of media outlets in the last week, writing a publicity rave the book has surged to number two on Amazon's list. Media reports have introduced Aslan as the religion of a religion as a religion scholar, but have failed to mention that he is a devout Muslim. So basically there's lots of people getting taught the Muslim faith without anybody saying that these are not new revelations of Jesus. These are things that Muslims have always believed. Now, let's pretend Christians did that. Let's pretend that Christians came out with an account of how they believe that the earth was created. But nobody ever mentioned that that writer was a Christian. You know as well as I do, even if you don't like Christians, just listen. You know as well as I do, they would never let that fly. That proves that there is a media bias towards and against Christians against Christians. That proves it. And if they can go after the Christians, what have I been saying all show? They're going to come for you next, whether you're Christians or not. They're going to come after the homosexuals, and they're going to come after people that don't live a certain lifestyle that they want. This is, this is much bigger than Christianity. His book is not a historian's report on Jesus. It is an educated Muslim's opinion about Jesus. Yet the book is being peddled as objective history on national TV and radio. Aslan is not a trained historian. Like tens of thousands of us, he has been formally educated in the theology and New Testament Greek. He is a bright man with a very right to hold his own opinion about Jesus, and of course I agree, and to prophesize his opinion. I also agree. As a sincere man, Aslan's Muslim beliefs affect his entire life, including his conclusions about Jesus. But this is not being disclosed. Zealot, the book, is being presented as objective and scholarly history, not as it actually is, an educated Muslim's opinion about Jesus and the ancient Near East. So let me ask you a question. Why is it when 0.08 of the population is Muslim, would every major news outlet bend over backwards to cover this? Why do you think that that might be? Do you think it's a chance that what they want to do is to demonize Christianity and then it's much easier to go after your other groups like Muslims, since again, they're only 0.08 of the population, they can go after them next. This is about separating cultures. I am giving you an entirely different take on why Zimmerman and Trayvon were important. This is why, people. Right here is why because they're trying to demonize Christians at every turn and then not tell anybody that that's exactly what's going on. And it matters because the government, as always, and this is the main point of the whole story, from the New American, the government, Christians attacked in Egypt by Muslim Brotherhood supporters, People that Obama and his administration and the Bush administration prior has supported. <coughs> Pardon me. Reports from Egypt indicate that attacks against Egypt's Coptic Christians have increased since former President Mohamed Morsi was forced from power on July 3rd. Cops claim, and that's the Coptic Christians, cops claim that they have been targeted by Islamic radicals as retribution for their opposition to Morsi, who was backed by the Muslim Brotherhood. Fox News, it goes on, citing a report in the Financial Times, reported that nine Christians have recently been killed in Egypt, including a Coptic priest, Father Mina Abaud Shawin, in the Sinai Peninsula. Following Charlene's murder, many other Coptic clergy have gone into hiding. But wait, wait, the Muslim Brotherhood, who are, as of uh, 515, 730, 2013, thankfully is losing ground to the Syrian government. Not that they're any good either, but they're better than these scum. 
Following Charwin's murder, many other Coptic clergy have gone into hiding, but no, why would they have to do that? Obama would never fund anybody that would hurt anyone. They're not Christians. Maji Lamai, identified as a Christian salesman, was also found murdered in the Sinai on July 4th, a few days after he was kidnapped and held for ransom equivalent to $70,000. The Times noted that acts of violence against cops have been reported ever since Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood took power last year. But these are the people that we are funding. Rather than staying out of this, what everybody was saying in the Obama administration, how wonderful it is. The, the revolution, they said, had come at last. Had come at last. What revolution? The revolution that says it's okay to slaughter Christians by the tons? This is something that's being distributed, being pushed in America, and now being distributed all over the world. And... It's disgusting to me. It's disgusting to me that we fund people that will pay for something like this. I covered this story last time. Right there, you can see the remains of a uh, desecrated church. This happened in Syria from people that we have uh, that we have funded. The next picture, I'm going to count to ten. You might want to shut your screen off. I am going to show this image. I'm going to zoom in on it. Take your screen off. I'll let you know when it's safe to put it back on. Don't look at your screen. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, say what's well, already up. I'm not used to the new technology. That would be a burnt baby in a manger. Paid for by your tax dollars. That's what happens when you're a Christian in another country. And if they're funding people that would do these kinds of things to Christians in other countries, then it's the kind of thing they're obviously looking to do to Christians in this country. And even if you hate Christians, I don't care if your favorite band is deicide. This matters because you could be a hardcore Satanist, and when they're done wiping out the Christians, do you somehow think they're going to have more respect for you? Do you think they're going to have more respect for you, Mr. Muslim? You, Mr. Hindu, you, Mr. Atheist, Mr. Indian, do you think so? Because I don't. I'm going to cover this one more time, even though I mentioned it last time because I wanted the pictures up. Make sure you look at photos. Obama-backed Syrian rebels ransack Christian village. I'm not going to read from it, but they went in. They destroyed churches. They beheaded Christians. They burnt babies. They did it with your tax dollars, because that is the direction that the Obama administration has been saying is better in Syria. Is the current leadership in Syria any damn good? No, they're certainly not. But this is something we need to stay out of. We do not need to decide which evil is, is better. What we need to do is look after U.S. interests, and that involves getting out of these nations, not getting further into them so that we have to choose a side. That is a correct view. Uh, we saw it with blacks and whites and to some degree Hispanics and Trayvon just a couple weeks ago. This is the culmination <coughs> of new Christian stories, Christian attack stories, and I'm telling you, they are not the only people you're going to find them going after. In closing, do not forget that when Hitler was starting the SA, it was bringing in people into the Nazi movement. He attracted the, uh, the bums, the out of work, the homosexuals, the outcasts, and the unwanted, and made them feel popular. Once that became a movement, then the very strong, very German, very Deutsch uh, men came in, and the very best became the SS, and the first official job of the SS was to slaughter the SA. That is why this story matters. Thank you, friends. You are listening to The Correct Views. Good night, friends. God bless. Please donate to the show if you can, because every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. This whole setup here has cost a small fortune and cables and everything, believe it or not. Also, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, Delake, and myself. We're always posting videos and articles, and we would love to hear from you. Good night, friends. God bless. Let me know what you think of the new set. Good night, my live friends, and thank you for watching.